to Two Guys and Some Horror. My name is Clark, and also, as always, my friend and co-host of the show, show, Curtis. Say hi. What's up, my dude? So, tonight's episode, we're discussing a phenomenal movie that was made in the 70s, but came out in the 2000s. We're talking about Deathbed, the bed that eats. Dude, you found a gem from the 70s. I, I got lucky. You know, sometimes Google throws you interesting shit, and this movie is mwah, it's a masterpiece. Very much so. I agree. Uh, so, what do we talk about? This, this, <laughs> what's that? What do we talk about? Okay, well, this movie is literally just scenes of a bed eating people. The majority of it, there's that you won't go about ten minutes without the bed swallowing someone whole. Uh, Curtis, how many people did you see get eaten by the bed in this film? Oh man, uh, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, probably sixteen. Sixteen people, and this movie runs about an hour and seventeen minutes. And I'm including the orgy. Uh, oh my god, the religious <laughs> revival. Well, I mean, any scene that focuses on the guy who had consumption is pretty much cut uh we'll get into this in a second but release notes just a couple notes about the film this was made in 1977 it is about a bed that's possessed by a demon spirit that consumes its users alive and i don't i don't understand what they mean by user if you touch the bed it basically eats you but this was made again by the director george berry and the inspiration for it came in a dream weirdly enough uh, Curtis, what? Give me your thoughts and your impressions before we kind of jump into the little quick review session section. So I absolutely love this story um, from that specific uh, perspective. That's it. Just just the writing and the story alone. I think it's it's really good. Um, when it comes to the effects, I think they did a good job for the time that it was created in. Um, but I mean, everything else in the movie pretty much left me lacking. Like I wanted something else from it. Mm. No, I, I, I don't really disagree with that at all. Don't know what I was expecting though with a movie from 1977 called Deathbed, the bed that eats. I mean, it literally, I, it's, it is. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. It is what it is. What, it, what did I want from this? I, I don't know. Better acting for sure. That's one thing I can well, say. I needed. This looks like a movie that was made by film students, to be frank. And I'm not sure if it was or wasn't, because I didn't have time to research. Well, I can tell you um, this. George Barry yeah. has literally done nothing else. This is the only thing he wrote and directed. I have a feeling you're right. If we did some more prying into his background, I don't think we'd see much more from um, many people in this film. If you look in the... Uh... The work that people who've been in this movie have done, some of them do have careers as actors. Like, if you look at Damien Hall, who played one of the uh, three main girls, she was actually probably the best actor in the film, and she did move on to do several other movies. Was that the girl with the eyes? No, it like was... Like the one that uh, made the bed freak out? It was the one who fought with the bed. Who, uh, uh, th Diane. There's a scene in the movie where where one of the characters fights against the bed and tries to get out of it, but the bed throws its sheet around her leg and pulls her back in. It was that lady, uh, yeah, Diane. Yeah, it's, it's Diane, yeah. She was, and you're right, she was good. There's also uh, William Russ, who's and Julie Ritter, uh, but he has quite a very, uh, very well worked, this guy here. He's been in movies like every year up to like 2019. Looks like he's still getting acting work plenty of people who and i think that may or may not have been the narrator i'm not sure interesting yeah i mean he, no, he's Sharon's brother the guy who the brother oh my goodness he was terrible he was terrible <laughs> why is it every time the younger daughter runs off i gotta go get her yeah he was bad no um, the, the uh, voice doesn't have much of an acting career I'm looking at it, he he did work off and on from 64 to about 1992. And most of that is him being a sound mixer. Hmm, interesting. He acted in one other movie in 1975. Yeah, I guess I didn't, yeah. I didn't give these actors 
enough credit and I, and I apologize for that. Some of them did go on to have better careers. Um, my, 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 I still, I still stand by what I said for this specific movie that they were in though, Deathbed. They, they didn't, they didn't do a good job, unfortunately. And, uh, I'm glad to see that some of them did go on to have better careers and get more work. That's great. Um, but yeah, man, I, I wish, you know, my biggest, I, I wish we could get a remake of this Clark. And I know I, I said I was going to bring it up later on in the episode. Um, but I figure this is as good a time as now as ever. Whenever, man. Um, this is our show. We do what we want. <laughs> I do what I want. Um, I think this story, um, which we haven't really even broken apart yet, but I think this story could make for a really, really well-made film now you know, in 2020, I think we have the effects, the budgets, uh, we have the plethora of actors out there. Uh, we have really great directors, indie or not, who could take this and actually make it something much, much better. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I challenge any of our listeners, if you have friends or anyone who's out there, who's looking to, to remake something that, um, kind of, in my opinion, failed, um, but has a really good core, a good concept. This is it, man. This this is a good one. Um, I don't I don't understand how to, how you could make a movie. I'm gonna play the devil's advocate here and just okay. say I don't understand how you can make a movie where a bed just eats people. To me, that seems more of like a 15 minute spotlight on anything, and that's what this movie felt like to me. It felt like this was like a one act and from a theater troupe. And a lot of those theater actors were people who've never acted before and was kind of like a community college project. Um, you could do something decent that would hold my attention with that, but this movie is just too long and it's too much of the same thing over and over again. And that's where I think today we could fix it. And, I, and here's, here's my quick pitch. So the, hour, the movie's only an hour and 17 minutes. In my opinion, that's the perfect amount of time really for um, this kind of a movie. You don't need much more than an hour, 20, hour and 30 this movie felt way longer than that, and that, that's part of its problem. But what we could do is shift our focus so much from the deathbed that eats people, right, as Patton Oswalt labeled it, to more of the demon whose spirit is, cons is, is stuck inside this bed that consumes users, users, loose word there, don't know why they say users, but they do, alive. And, and you focus more on the demon and his... Uh, understanding and then you build more of that relationship between him and why he saved the man behind the pa painting instead of just killing him right I think there's so much loss like you said you wanted more about the painter who stuck behind the painting I, I'm honestly confused at the demons purpose I'm, I'm confused <laughs> at all that I felt like it was shoved in there and his rationality didn't make sense to me his focus. I if if I were to gather anything from this film, it says this bed just fucking wants to eat anyone, and this guy who had consumption was dying. Is like, you know, this guy's dying, and he's getting ready to die. I'm gonna torture the shit out of him and trap him in a paint in the painting he just drew. Yeah, but he gives uh, him so much him. more power, though. I mean, towards the end of the movie, we see the power, but like he has more power than just the guy trapped behind a painting. At the end that of the day, that was weird. Yeah. That was weird, too. Like, oh, the bed is weak. I can talk to them. That's just, what? Okay. They, they don't really build any rules, exactly. They don't really build any rules to break any rules. And that's that's definitely something that bothered me at the end. Yep. It's like, well, we just wrote in this thing to help, you know, get the story ended. I, I don't know, man. I really don't know. I'm with you there. I don't get they, it. They don't have to explain it. I get it. It's kind of like a ma movie magic thing. It's like. Don't ask why. It's just, just just because, kind of like somebody like passing out in an anime, and all of a sudden their hair turns blonde. It's like, oh, this thing that this Deus Ex Machina is here now that's gonna save us all. It, it's I don't know. To me, it's just bad writing. The whole movie was bad writing. No offense to George Barry. I, I feel like this was too too much with too little if that makes sense i want it remade All that's right. my hey, that's man. my final hope <laughs> i don't know if i could watch a remake you just if watch the invisible it. man remake so you can watch this remake okay oh god I, I will talk about that later i'll talk about that later uh, we're gonna put a time. pin on it 
for our listeners? Oh, it's, it'll come out later. I let's, think. Let's try to crush this story real quick. I think as far as like the quick review goes, though, I think yeah. we just hit it. So let's okay. just jump into it. Perfect. Let's just jump into it, like you said. Uh, I the story is stupid. You have three girls who go to this place, and the girl's gone. Like her mother doesn't know where she is, so her brother goes searching for her. And during this process, we see this bed, and this narrator who's an artist, and he's behind the painting. He's be inside a painting of the bed he drew when he was on his deathbed. And he's trapped in the painting and he's narrating and he's talking about all this boring stuff, like about how he wants to, he's, oh, it's so terrible for me to watch them die. And he just kind of sits there and like the bed gives him props, like the leg brace of some random girl and a flower. It's just weird. It's almost like the bed's giving him gifts. I don't understand why. There's no ever any explanation realistically to why he's giving him things. But yeah, he he just gets stuff. Did he get the tobacco, though? The cigarettes, yeah. He did get the tobacco. I believe Very so, because nice. he mentions how he hasn't had a cigarette in so long. And that was because the, uh, what's her name again? It was not Susan. Diane was smoking on the bed, and that was, yeah. <laughs> what a crazy scene. Oh, man, this movie is just nuts. Talk. Let's talk about the foam. Let's talk about how it digests people. Yeah, so we get, there's like a yellow acidy foam. Um, and then there's also on top of that, there's like a yellow tub of acid, right? So the effects for the, for the listeners, if you haven't seen it, it's on Amazon prime, please just go suffer the hour and 17 minutes or whatever it, yeah, at least, I don't know, fast forward through it. Just, just bear with us here. Okay. Cause it's, it's, <laughs> I'm finding it more and more funny the, the more we talk about it. This would um, be a fun drinking game movie, to be frank. But every time, every the time, bed, like eat somebody, <laughs> you take a sip of your drink. Yeah, and uh, you cheer. Every time it eats something, because yeah. it eats a whole bucket of KFC chicken. I will make a drinking game out of this movie, and we will have a good time. Deathbed, the bed that makes you drink. Um, Deathbed, the bed that drinks. <laughs> um, it does drink, by the way. It does. It, it drinks, drinks a whole bottle of wine. The very first scene. Yeah. Um, it's cause it's a demon at the end of the day. All right. So I, I really liked the, the, the set for this movie isn't much. It's just a stone room from what you can see, it's, but it's a mansion, but the, it was filmed in a mansion that has since been demolished. That was in Detroit in Detroit. Yep. But the bed itself, right? It's just a simple bed that they put a tub into, um, or under and, Filled it with water, yellow dye. It looks like beer or urine, your, your pick. And then they also created like this foamy substance, like a soapy, foamy substance that was sticky. Um, and and those were, that's basically the effect. At any point in time that it's eating something, if it fell into the bed, it would go into the, the yellow liquid and look like it's bubbling. And then it would slowly eat that, right? And then if uh, it was coming out to get you, it was more of that foamy, bubbly, sudsy, uh, acid, and it could pull you back in, which is even crazier. It, it, it looked like they had a vat, like a glass, like a, there was a glass pane that they were filming through with the camera. It could, felt like they, well, they didn't have a, like a waterproof camera or anything like that. Right. They did have kind of that, like you said, like a tub. Do you do you wonder if the that acidy stuff is supposed to portray his stomach acid, the demon's stomach acid? Uh, you know, I whatever it is, it just. It gets sucked into whatever. And Here I go, giving the writer too much it. credit again. Um, but they get teleported, and then it does weird things where it spits out, like, fake people. I don't know. I think that just, it was a hallucination it caused. I don't necessarily know if it happened. Yeah, a dream? Yeah. It did talk, he did talk about how the bed's giving people nightmares. Which yeah, she got the acid it? sweats. Yeah, which I'm glad they, they said, oh, he's giving her nightmares. Okay, thank you, narrator. Now I know what is happening. Yeah, versus, oh, is this shit happening for real? Is it not? What What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um. So the story is broken down quite nicely by title slides. Um, and, and it goes intro, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and then the just dessert. And I felt like at least that was a really helpful way for us to understand that this is all kind of the course of, you know, I don't know, the day for the for the bed. 
because the couple who goes in first was definitely the morning that was that breakfast and then lunch to to the rest of the movie is basically diane and her friends and then the brother coming to save the girl right i mean that it's all one day does that seem right to you probably like to me i don't even well the yeah it hasn't even been like a couple of hours okay um, and then it's we get a lot of really cool jumps, background. Sorry. No, you're good. Uh, this movie jumps around from thing to thing to thing in like different times and periods that you don't know when or what things are happening. And it's just kind of weird that all these people find this random bed in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so that's the other thing is the Diane is there with her friends because it's some place that she heard about from her coworkers, right? It's like some place that she's going to go by or stay at or, or they never really break that down a whole lot but that that's at least the feeling that I got is that she was taking her friend there it's her lesbian lover I'm pretty sure and they were going there and then but their co-worker Susan decided to tag along and then Susan starts getting all uncomfortable and she's like I don't know about this something weird's happening with these two girls I thought she was trying to leave the whole movie. I yes. don't know if they were gay or not. I thought they were just friends. So she makes a um, comment and says uh, to the girl, the blonde, when she's looking at Diane, she says she keeps giving her weird eyes. And when the camera pans to her, she's giving her like lovey-dovey eyes like, oh, this girl's so cute. She's the best. She's the bee's knees kind of a feeling is what I got. Bee's knees? Yeah, the bee's knees, man. That was the, the 50s. Bees knees. I've never um, heard that before. Could you've you never heard the bees on, knees? Oh, on the knees of the bees? Yes, I've heard it before. I'm okay, thank you. God. Thank uh, God. <laughs> we, I don't know. Sure. Why not? I mean, it doesn't hurt the story. Why? That's for sure. Why not? A bed eats people. Why not? A demon's inside the bed. Why not? People are going out in the middle of nowhere to, to sleep in a random place that doesn't have electricity. And there is a bed that's probably been used by a lot of different people. Okay, that, no, thank you. Fuck that. I don't get that. And a mafia boss lives there. What? And, like, the servants of the house or something. I guess there was a mansion connected to it at some point. Because, like, a servant girl who was tired sleeps in it. I don't know. There's a lot. Let's just put it that way. There's a lot that, that happens. Um, it doesn't show the old lady get eaten. Sadly, or the baby, that's probably for the better. It's a it's a rule in a lot of films, you don't show the elderly or the young, die. That's like safe. If they're under the age of like twelve, they're safe. Can we add Most dogs to that list? Um, I'd really appreciate that. I can add dogs because dogs die in most horror movies. Yes, they die, but I don't want to see it. I don't want to see it either, man. I don't want it. Dog should be the only character that survives. Dog, oh, d yeah, we should have. There should be a hashtag survivor dogs instead of hashtag yeah, survivor I, girl. Um, I would rather not. Have... Not that anyone shouldn't survive. I want to make that clear. If you're smart enough and you're good enough, you should survive. And by good, I'm not saying morality. I'm saying like good at getting away from bad shit. I just want to see the dogs all live. We can't all be Airbud. I mean, good thing is all dogs go to heaven. But I mean, maybe Burt Reynolds is in heaven. <laughs> maybe he's he's up there drinking all of his whiskey and looking at that hot Sally Field. I can't go on with this. This is terrible. Yeah, we might have to cut that whole bit no. if we can't round it out. I can't, no, because Burt Reynolds is... Yeah, Sally Field, those two, two things, it's, yeah. It's Burt Reynolds. I'll have to cut this whole... Just cut the whole episode, ruin it, it's ruined. Day's ruined, folks, uninstall, delete. I Anyhow, this, going back to the bed, I I actually, let's talk about the acting for a minute. Okay. Let's, let's and talk we're about done. the acting. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about how fragmented it is. I, it felt to me like they were reading, like they don't didn't know the lines, and they were having to have them repeated to them as if they didn't have time to read a script. I mean, I give them credit; they're not looking off camera constantly at cue cards, so that's a plus. Yeah, but the, it just felt so half-assed most they of did. the acting in the film. The only characters who didn't really seem that way was the 
the main character, the artist. As, he was as so you know, good. Me. I feel so bad for him. Yeah, Patrick Spence Thomas. He did mostly sound mixing, is what it says here. And he'd only acted in two things. Like, fantastic. Like, great job. I loved his voice. It was enthralling. It had presence. Then Diane did a pretty okay job. But no offense, this one of the characters, uh, Susan, she looked deadpan and faced the whole, whole film as if she she had no energy. She might have been high or drunk. She's just like, I want to leave right now. I am very uncomfortable. So on top of the bad acting, and I think this, uh, the only reason I'm bringing it up because I think it goes kind of coincided with it, is the poor ADRing that they did for all of the voices. So it's, ADRing. ADR is like the, it's the additional or the re like dubbing of the audio over the top because when they're filming in that, you know, mansion, the audio is all terrible. The acoustics are off. Everything's bad. So they take the film back and they have the actors redo the lines and then they fill it in over the top of the film to crisp, like make it clean and crisp again. And it's a very mm. common, uh, you know, technique used in a lot of films um, even today. And the biggest problem though with it is if I sound like I'm in a studio with, with, you know, soundproof walls and all that, that's not the same sound as you're going to get in an open room. So you have to be very careful about how you film it. And with these girls for the most part, um, cause there's really a, just a bunch of females in the, in the movie, not that the guys did better or anything like that, but like the voices just didn't really match up with the lips a lot if you watch it. And I just yeah. don't know if it was because they didn't have the proper like uh, equipment to do the ADRing better, or if they just didn't film it well. Because no boom mic is gonna, I don't know, help them in that situation either. I don't know, but I think that definitely I, didn't help the acting at all. I, I definitely want to look more into this later and have like a better understanding of what went be behind the actual creation of this film. I. Yeah, it definitely did look low budget, and I, the recording equipment existed back then. There, there were, there was plenty of audio equipment. I, I don't understand. I think it was because of the budget, and I don't know. It feels like a film student movie. Yeah, I definitely agree. It feels a lot uh, like a film student, like someone working on their, you know, video for their college course or something like that. Definitely. Um, which is nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I personally love the story. I think the writing was good. I think it could go on and become something better if someone remade it, um, potentially in 2020 and beyond. Um, but yeah, there's really not my, my favorite part. And this is kind of like my last bit. I don't have a whole lot of other notes to talk about, but my absolute favorite part of this movie is the demon theory. So the mm -hmm. demon gets turned into a breeze it comes across a girl. It decides to create a bed to seduce the girl. Then it takes a, hor a human form. And then um, when he seduces the girl, and I'm assuming due to them making coitus, the girl dies because she can't handle the demon, is the way it made it sound. And then he becomes upset. His eyes crack. He cries blood. That blood drips on the bed. The demon goes to a tree and waits forever in sadness. Then the blood turns the bed into another demon, right? A demon is born in the bed. And then now that's the deathbed that eats people, right? So that's that whole entire, that's the circle of the bed story. That's how it was made. Well, let's talk about how the curse gets broken then, because we, if we talk about that, we have to talk about the resolution as well. Let's oh, talk I was just, about how yeah, that's fine. The, the, the brother and the sister are like about to get eaten by the, the bed. And then the bed, when it eats her, the, the narrator essentially says you have to die so she can come back to life correct so the curse can be over yeah that bed is so attached to that original girl somehow that it makes its stomach basically go inside out every time it sees her it's bleeding from the inside which is a pretty cool effect um you know for this movie for its time or whatever but yeah it's um I don't know. The narrator also tricks the girl, right, into basically dying, uh, yeah. which is kind of sad in a way. 
the brother the brother's a dingus he puts his damn hands in the bed and loses his hands they come out looking like skeleton fingers like ah it's so it's just so stupid but the fact i mean the fact that matters is that the girl had to the girl who created the bed demon life since she's the only one who can stop it by making love or something like that was the at the end of the day that was it right I don't, I don't understand. Like, I honestly have no idea why the bed died or the demon got freed. I don't, I'm curious. I, I, I just, I, I don't understand anything. So yeah, this so movie doesn't make the man sense. behind the painting tells Sharon, like, here's this spell. It'll, it'll move the bed from outside the chamber into daylight because that's where it has to be. But that actually kills Sharon. And then it gives the girl who created the demon, right? The original girl from the story I was saying, it gives her the ability to come back. Yeah. She comes back to life. And then by, I don't, but that's the last piece I don't get is like, what about her coming back breaks the demon? So that way it is the demon has his love back. Ah, that's okay. It's so still stupid, dumb. but <laughs> I, I don't know. Just, fuck okay. that's what they did that's what they, that's what started this mess and then, and then your but why becomes a, but, but what and then no it, it, there's there's a level of but why you can throw in there and it just i've never seen know. clark's uh volume meter spike so high i'm so sorry no it is me too. it's staying too. It's, it's so good <laughs> it's so good it just oh it was, this move but that's I, that's all I, I got. That's nope. That's I all I got, man. Movie. That's all I got. I love this movie. I will watch this again. But I'm, it's going to turn into a game. I that's have to what say, this movie is. yeah, it's a good one. Uh, next Halloween party, we'll we'll put this on, and we'll use it as a drinking game, and it'll be glorious. Oh man, like that's if we have a Halloween party. I know, if time permits. Yeah, have a new kid, man. Oh no, we still have parties. We have a grandma. Send her to the grandma. Oh. Send him and her to the grandma. Oh, well, never mind. Never mm. mind that. Jeez, Baby, perks. Baby sits. Baby perks sits. live in your family. Yeah. And Heck yeah. Perks. Anyways. Let's, talk, let's kind of move on real quick. Let's go to fun facts and trivia. Sweet. There's not a lot because there's not a lot to this movie. Uh, we've already hit a few of them, but I'll recap everything that we've got. So I've got six fun facts and trivia for today. Uh, number one, comedian Patton Oswalt mentions the movie on his 2007 CD, werewolves and lollipops where he does a stand-up routine on it but he mistakenly refers to this movie as deathbed the bed that eats people which i personally think is a much more fitting name number two until its official dvd release in 2003 deathbed had been circulated via private pirated bootlegs and unknown to the director's uh understanding the film had gained an underground fan base which is pretty crazy Filming, to, to yeah, go ahead. Go back on the previous fact with Patton Oswalt. Uh -huh. That bit is pretty funny, so I recommend checking that out. All right, I'll try to find the YouTube clip to that bit if there is one, and then put it in the description for you listeners. Filming was begun in 1972, um, and Answer Print was struck in 1977, but the film wasn't released until 2003. That is insane to me to think that 30, what is that, 31 years went by before we got an official release of this film <laughs> um oh man that's nuts uh it's it could have made a lot of money during that time you just didn't know <laughs> yeah well it did underground those pirated bootlegs sell for five bucks a pop uh number four <laughs> director george oh. barry's inspiration for deathbed came in a dream which the film's bizarre surreal nature is attributed to and we definitely felt it number five Filmed almost entirely at the Garwood Mansion on Kielsen Island in Detroit. And I think that's the part that Clark was bringing up earlier. Um, I believe it's been demolished, though, since, right? That's what you said? Yes, it's been destroyed. It's no mm -hmm. longer there. And our last and final fun fact and trivia. The artist dies of tuberculosis in the film. His room was also surrounded by Audrey Beardsley's drawings, whom also died of tuberculosis. And that concludes our fun facts and trivia. Well, it's a uh, favorite quote of the movie. Um, where have you been? 
We've been looking all over for you. I've just been here, reading by the fire like I said I would. What have you been reading that we couldn't find you? A book of dead people. I'm in it, and you are too. By the way, that was me trying to imitate their actual acting. I, I think I hit it pretty spot on. I think you nailed it. Um, you might have actually done it better. Ah, uh, we can't say that. We can't say that. <laughs> we uh, can't, but I can. <laughs> Let's talk about May releases right now because we're wah, in an interesting wah, situation where we're wah. in quarantine. Exactly. And right now, there was only really Saw noted Correct, to come yeah. out. Uh, Spiral there was, another... was yeah, supposed Spiral to come was, out May 15th. Yeah. A Saw chapter. Yeah, so it's not going to come out. We don't know when. It's probably going to get rescheduled. There's been no news. Um, so anyhow, the, in, the interesting part is Spiral was initially supposed to come out in October, right? But they right. pushed, they pulled it back to earlier in the year to May because they didn't want it to fight with Halloween kills. Now it's looking like with COVID going on, um, they haven't given an official re-release date of when it's going to come out. They may just skip theater releases altogether for Spiral, though, and go directly to Amazon Prime and whatever other streaming services want to buy the contract with them kind of like what um some of the other films that are scheduled to come out right now are doing um so don't hold your breath it'll cost you i think it's 20 bucks to rent it if it does go directly to um like amazon prime or something like that so 20 bucks probably to rent it um that's your best bet unless covid decides to all of a sudden just disappear which it doesn't look like it's doing so Right. Just to keep everybody kind of on the same note here, um, yeah, we Clark and I were kind of pissed actually when we started looking at some of the horror films that were projected to come up soon, and then um, you know obviously everyone's lives are kind of thrown in into a loop. So, well, it's uh, unfortunate. Yeah. Let's move into uh, yeah, it sucks. We're gonna talk about the things we've been doing and, and talking about recently, Curtis and. I'm, I'm particularly interested in hearing what you've you've done. What have I been doing with my life? Yeah, that's um, a question. Minecraft. Minecraft. Why that's, Minecraft? And that's why all Minecraft? I got. That's all I got. Um, um, I'm back in yeah. Minecraft. I'm back. I'm sucked in. I'm currently working to build up some of our um, some of our friends in Discord. Um, and start something similar to Hermitcraft, for those of you who know what right. that is. Um, it's kind of just a community of Minecrafters who get on and kind of do fun events and games and stuff like that together. Um, but you build out your own separate little individual, think of it as like a, a company or an organization. And um, yeah, you, you just have fun. The goal is to just have more fun because you're playing with more people. Lately, I've been playing solo and absolutely loving the the kind of the reset button, as I call it. I, I like starting over, doing things from scratch again. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking to set that up um, actually this week. It's early April, though, so who knows what's going to happen by the time this episode goes out. Nice, man. What the hell have you been up to? I have been eating a lot of food. No, I, I'm... I just watched uh, The Invisible Man, and I rented it for, it was like early early access or sneak peek or something on Amazon Prime, and I was like, oh yeah, Curtis wanted to watch this. So, uh, you sounded pretty excited about it, so I watched I it. I was. I was disappointed. And it was, you know, like if we if we have a conversation about it later, well, we could save like most of the things. I was, I was just, it was more of an empowerment movie than a horror movie to me. And I just kind of like, okay, that's just not what I wanted to see. And had I known before I watched it, I probably wouldn't have. <laughs> I I feel like it, it sends a very muddled political message that doesn't make sense by the end of the movie. And it made me question who was gaslighting who. And I just felt like there's, I don't feel this movie is just uncomfortable. Is I don't know if... Because the way it ended it was in such a way that made me question, like, what's the real story here? I'm seeing from someone's perspective. Like, have you seen The Lighthouse? Uh, no, not yet. It, it kind of left me feeling a little bit like that movie made me feel. I've also heard it that was, one's really good. Yeah, 
It's good. It's just weird. It's just weird. I like weird. You might like it, man. It, it's a very beautiful. It's it's a gorgeous film. Like the scenes, it, it, the the director knew what he was doing. Like the, it definitely invokes the feelings he wants you to feel, and that's why I'm like, I don't like these feelings, so I don't want to watch this again. <laughs> yeah, that's how I yeah. felt after. There's there's a lot of. Um... So it's a very specific niche of horror that I just don't like. Um, I don't like to watch it a lot. And it's yeah. like the revenge um, niche or genre, subgenre of like horror. Hostile. Um, hostile, I can stomach. It's more like I spit on your grave or um, there was a movie I did. Uh, I was going to do a review for called Animalistic, um, which it tends to be a lot more like enter girl. Girl gets raped. Girl gets payback everyone should be happy but i'm not at the end of the day the girl got raped then she had to turn into this monster and it's like the same story in all of these revenge style uh films and it just really leaves me feeling uneasy and and not happy like there is no good ending to any of these any of those types of films in my opinion that's just my opinion but you might not like vagina vagina al dente then so uh <laughs> is that on the list it is not yet but it might be it's a, it's a urban legend actually in a lot of European countries where, like, they tell they tell men like don't sleep with loose women they might have teeth in their vagina and bite your dick off. Oh, I love teeth. Yeah, right, right. So this is going to be a mature episode because of that sentence alone. Uh, yeah. Pretty uh, <laughs> pretty interesting stuff. I was terrified. I couldn't watch it. All, All right, like I'm I'm putting minutes, I'm putting done. teeth on the list. You're putting teeth on the list? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yes. that's the name of the film, actually. And then uh, It Follows is another good one that I actually enjoyed because, to me, that movie had a decent, good ending. I don't, I don't know. Those aren't yeah. revenge to me, though. Those are more along the lines of just, like, like teeth is, teeth is out there, man. It is a different level of film. <laughs> In my opinion, it's, it's not. It doesn't start out as as revenge. It's just like no. she she's kind of like a vigilante in her own way, and she is neutering the population. Yes, um, it was a terrible film. It scares the shit out of me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I am very neurotic. I don't like it. <laughs> Here we go. All right, we're gonna go right into the next episode of Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, I think it is time. Said, it's time for us to plug our shit. Curtis, where can the people find us? You can find us on Instagram and Twitter at the number two guys horror pod. We do a lot of social media posting. I get into a lot of conversations on Twitter. Uh, Clark is doing a great job of handling our Instagram account. We're looking for more artistic stuff on there. So you're going to see it's a different blend of horror <clears throat> and artistic photos in my opinion clark takes some really nice photos whenever he does posts whereas i just throw up some random shit that i found on the internet so you're gonna love both they're both equally exciting and they keep you up to date on all the important stuff that we've got going on what episodes are coming out next um, i give sneak peeks i do trivia i do live tweets um, on twitter and all that kind of fun stuff so the more horror you want um, jump onto those social medias and pay attention uh, to what we got going on, because I post that stuff on there constantly. Thank you guys so much for listening to us. <laughs> we have so much fun doing this. Uh, as we say almost every episode, this is a passion project for me and for Clark. Um, and we really do appreciate every listen that we get. Um, but what we love more than listens is you guys. So thank you. And we'll catch you all next week. Good night, everyone. Yes. Check us out. Was that your was that your goodbye? I I mean, not yeah. really. I mean, yes. This, this is a great kind Check. of yes. Check us out. Yes.